Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to sequence layers in After Effects. Number of different reasons why you might have sequence layers in, if you film in GoPro and you film a time-lapse, it might be image sequences. It might just be PNG images, millions of PNG images that you need to stitch together. Um, in a third-party program or in the GoPro software, but if you want to maybe edit edit the images in bulk in, let's say, Photoshop or Lightroom, you could then sequence them together in After Effects. You could also sequence in Photoshop, but this will be an After Effects sequencing tutorial. So um, another reason why you might have to sequence layers if you, for example, render in um, Cinema 4D, you might want to then import into After Effects um, the Cinema 4D render, but they might be in an image sequence. So let's just jump right in and show you how to image sequence these images. So go to File, Import, File. Um, you just wanna go to the to the file location where the image sequences are. In this example, this is GoPro. I could just select the first image in the image sequence and there's a box right here, it says PNG sequence. I'm just gonna select that box there, make sure it's imported as footage, hit OK. And now, when I, uh, I'm just gonna drag this down here, it'll create a new composition with this with these layers. You notice here that it stitched all the photos together into a video. Now this is GoPro video and it is at 4K, so it's not gonna be best the greatest quality when I'm trying to move it, but I'm just gonna come up here to my, to my composition settings and make sure my frame rate matches what I filmed at. So it filmed at 29.97, so I'm just gonna change that there. And I'm gonna reduce the resolution here to 1920 by 1080. That way it renders a little bit faster. Just gonna hit S on the keyboard and scale this down 50%. And now you see here when I render this out, it stitched all the images together just as if it's a video. So from here, you could render this out as a video. Um, you could add some effects, but I'll show you kind of my workflow if I rendered something out in Cinema 4D. So first I'd go to File, Import, File, and I'm gonna go to my image sequence, select the first file, make sure PNG image is selected, go to Import, and now I'm going to drag this down and create a new composition with it. So let's see, this is a black background. So, and I only want the white here. So I'm just gonna go to layer new solid, make a white layer here. So that'll make a white layer on top. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to select this. Uh, this actually needs to go on the bottom. Let's see, make this luma mat. And what that basically does is it takes all of the white and right, because this is a black and white, it basically just, if this is white, pull the image from, pull the image back here. So you'll see that basically it really simply snipped out the image. Um, I'll show you real quick what this would look like if it was um, a different image, just so you kind of know, you know, what I guess I'm talking about here. I'm just gonna drag an image here. For instance, let's say I had this image. I went to Luma, Luma inverted. Uh, let's see. Luma inverted, that's basically what it would give me, right? So um, I'm basically doing the same thing except for only with, um, only with these two layers. So um, what I would do from here was I would, I would, um, uh, I'd probably just actually leave this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to take an image from, from here. So you notice that the original image actually looked like this. So it had the Odessa logo. I went ahead and removed it in Photoshop and I'll show you how I did that right now. So what I did here is I just right clicked, went to open with uh, Photoshop. Real simple, just we'll open it up into Photoshop real simply. It takes a little bit of time though, for some reason. Uh, Photoshop on my PC just kind of, to be honest, sucks. And I don't use it very often. Um, but you see here, there's this tool called uh, Spot Healing. Just gonna select that and I'm gonna reduce the size here. That size looks good. And I'm just gonna just color in this white area where the logo is. And it might not be perfect the first time, which it wasn't, but I'm just gonna kinda color in here. And what this does is basically samples the background and 
gets rid of this for me. So basically this is a tutorial on, on how to remove things from images in Photoshop as well. So now I could just export this as a uh, PNG image, which I already have, which is right here. So now I'm just gonna move this into After Effects. I'm actually gonna move them both into After Effects just so you can uh, kind of see, uh, so I know where to place the logo. So now that that's in After Effects, I'm just gonna drag this down to make a new composition out of it. And I'm actually gonna do that for both images. But this one I'm just gonna make invisible for now because I just need to use this as a template again. So my render is my is my image and you could tell it's very large, which is good. I made it really large and I made the frame rate really slow. That way there's a lot more room for me to slow it down or speed it up or, or scale it. So that's why the, my image sequence is so large. So I'm just going to you know, eyeball this here. If I press Y on the keyboard, I'm going to move the anchor point to the top here. And then move this image to the top there. And now when I hit S on the keyboard and scale this, um, holding control helps you scale a little bit slower. I'm just going to line it up just like that. So you can see the image isn't perfect. Um, there's a perspective issue going on here, but that's fine. No one will probably be able to tell the difference. Um, in the meantime, I could just delete that background layer re-enable the, the other background layer, the one without the image, right? And just add a drop shadow to this logo. And I'm gonna set the direction to 180. That way the shadow goes directly down. I may be going to increase the distance a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of softness to it. And that looks pretty good. It almost looks just like the original. So um, here's where things get a little tricky. Again, this is moving really slowly. I don't want it to move that slowly. So what I could do here is I can probably come up to composition settings. I'm gonna increase this to like 60 seconds. And let's see, did it make a full spin yet? So I'm just going to right click this, go to time, enable time remapping. So I have a keyframe when it starts and I'm gonna spin it until it gets to makes a full spin, which it didn't quite make a full spin on here. So I'm going to again increase this to another 60. Give me another minute. There it is, that looks like that's the end there, which is what I want. And let me just ensure that this is only one spin. Yep, that's one spin. So I can come here and just move this keyframe over. So basically what that does is it sets a keyframe at the beginning, a keyframe at the end of the composition and you notice it disappears. So um, I could now reduce this composition size back down to my desired 10 seconds, maybe even five seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds looks good. We'll do 10 seconds, we'll see. And now what I can do is I can come up to maybe, I don't know, two seconds, maybe two and a half seconds. Move this keyframe over. If I hold Alt and click on that keyframe timestamp, I could just type in loop, loop out, and I'm gonna do um, cycle. And what this will do is it'll cycle these keyframes just like that. Now again, because this isn't spinning on the perfect axis, um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add a rotation to this keyframe, U, J on the K on the keyboard to bounce to that keyframe. And I'm just gonna give this one spin on its Z direction, and that looks terrible. And the reason is because the anchor point's in the center. I'm just gonna move the anchor point into, or the anchor point's not in the center. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drag this anchor point down to the center there. And now it should spin on that axis as well as that axis. And that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna loop this as well. We'll see what this looks like. And that is spinning extraordinarily fast. Let's see if we can't. That looks pretty cool um, at that speed. So at 10 seconds, one rotation, I think I think that's probably where where we should be. I'm just gonna render this out and see what this looks like. And see if this cycles properly. It should cycle perfectly.
and it does just how I'd like it. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is move these first keyframes up a little bit, and I kind of want, maybe add a little bit of animation here to this and give it like a second to kind of start. So let's see, I can maybe add old TV or just search, should probably search effects TV. That looks terrible. Just gonna hit Control Z, be weak. I look better. Um, you know what? I'm not gonna do any of that. I kind of like the idea of this being a, a GIF that just continues on forever. But I also kind of like how you would be able to see the, the logo perfectly for maybe a second. So it spins back. And maybe I'll add some motion here to this, just some very light. You can see here on the on the graph editor, it's very light. And that looks pretty freaking cool. Let's give this just a little bit. And I'm a pretty big fan. So from here, I could just render this out as, you know, however I'd want to render out, maybe as a GIF. Um, there are other types I could render this out as. But uh, anyways, that's just how you sequence images in After Effects and kind of the workflow that I would use to pull stuff from, from um, Cinema 4D into After Effects as an image sequence and then change the duration. So the big thing to note about exporting from Cinema 4D is I always export at really high frame rates so that way I could I could shrink it and extend it as much as I want. If I'm rendering out at 30 frames a second here, I might render it out in Cinema 4D at 120 frames per second. So, and I do it very large so I could scale it down and everything looks nice and crisp still. So anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and check out other videos on screen. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.